This week's review gun has been a long time coming. I first knew about this around a year ago, and I've been longing to get my hands on this, or should I say, these versions. Hello and welcome to AAR on Air. Today is another firm favourite of mine and an addition to the range of the absolute classic revolver, the Webley Mark VI .455. Straight away, I should let you know, I do own one of these and I love everything about it. And now they brought out two more versions to help complete the picture. The 4-inch police model and the 2.5-inch civilian model. Side comment and interesting point here. As some of you may know, we're in the middle of renovating our new, well, old house. And the plasterer asked me why would anybody want an air gun and why would they ever want more than one? Then he realised you could get replica pistols, revolvers and rifles, etc. His face changed to a grin. He completely changed his mind and is now looking to start a collection of these really understandably desirable pieces of history. Now, to some people, the attraction is the original history. To others, it's a throwback to their younger days of using the original firearm when they were in the forces or the like. To others, it's the reminder of Sunday afternoon films and in more modern times, they were used in gaming worlds as well. Well, the Mark VI covers all of those and is among the elite few that actually does. Let's take a quick look and a bit of an overview first, shall we? There really is so much to say about this revolver, and if, by the time we've done, you're not convinced, then go and try one. You see, they are made to the original blueprints, and as such, not only look authentic and realistic, but they have the feel of authenticity about them too. I have the original 6-inch version, the new 4-inch and the 2.5-inch version here, which I would normally claim to be the full range. But there are also a number of finishes to them, including Aged, Battlefield, Black, Exhibition. They come in both pellet or BB versions, and a 2.2 calibre version will be available too. But at the time of going to press, availability is the difficult bit. The 6-inch version is classed as the service revolver and was favoured by the British and Commonwealth troops in both world wars and was favoured because of that stopping power that a .455 calibre revolver gave them. And of course, back in the day, it was considered quick to reload due to that break action. Something like 300,000 to 500,000 were produced in their different forms and versions and continued to be used well into the 1970s. Not bad considering the first Webley revolver was produced in the 50s. The 1850s, that is. The 4-inch version was manufactured for and favoured by the police force and again was used extensively by them at home and abroad in such places as Hong Kong and Singapore. The 2.5-inch version, or the pocket gun, was classed as the gentleman's choice of sidearm. I say gentleman, but it would also be favoured by... Well, non-gentlemen too. Again, not only for its stopping power, but its short length and ease of discreet carrying in the pocket. I feel I should be getting the Peaky Blinders outfit out again. I do like the way Webley have included a list of film and gaming platform credits on the back of the boxes. And more than that, I love how that list keeps increasing from the original boxes to the new ones, proving just how popular this revolver still is. 
Let's take a look at some of the stats, shall we? The 6-inch version is 1.066 kilograms unloaded and has an overall length of around 28.5 centimetres, naturally a 6-inch barrel. The barrel, of course, is rifled in this, the 177 pellet version. There is a BB version available if you prefer, but personally and from experience, I'd always go for the pellet one. The 4.5 inch tops the scales at just over a kilogram and is around 23 centimetres long, leaving the 2.5 inch, which comes in at 953 grams and an overall length of around 19 centimetres. They all feel like a real handful, adding to the realistic top brake replica experience. They're all made from heavyweight metal, with the only non-metal part being the grip covers, which are a hard Bakelite plastic. From the front, the service revolver has a recessed barrel to highlight its .455 origins, with the shorter versions having the internal barrel going all the way to the end. They all sport fixed front blade sights with a rear notched sight which forms part of the cylinder release catch and is fixed on these versions. The shape of this is so classical with the bold and simple engineered external cams and latches but this design proved itself to be very reliable perhaps because of its simplicity and ease of maintenance even in the muddy trenches of the first world war everything about it oozes 19th century and to me adds to the overall appeal to access the cylinder simply Push forward on the rear release cam with your thumb and the gun breaks open and forward. It presents then the six shells for you to remove and reload. Simply remove and drop your preferred pellets into the rear of the shells. When you've got them all loaded up, simply return back to the cylinder, drop all six in, snap it back together and simply feel yourself go back in time. These are field strippable and simply needs the cam lever screw removing and then rotate the cam lever anti-clockwise and the cylinder will then be removed. Refitting is simply the reverse. The trigger on these is dual action and even though it has a pull weight of around five pounds is smooth throughout the pull on whichever version you use. The grip is very comfortable and hides the CO2 cartridge underneath. To load this, simply remove the left hand side of the grip, carefully unscrew the bottom loop drop in your 12 gram CO2 and tighten enough to pierce the gas, taking care not to over tighten until you bend the authentic lanyard swivel loop. Return the cover and you're ready. At this point I would normally go to the chrono to see what the power output is, but first there are a couple of things to note. Firstly, the original only had around 620 feet per second figure. Of course, on a heavy hitting caliber, 265 grain bullet, giving this between 212 and 337 foot pounds of stopping power. And that's what it was favored for. The second thing to point out is the Max 3 Jewels sticker on the side of the barrel. This is a sticker and can be removed to keep this looking as authentic as possible. There is the usual warning writing on the right hand side, but this could easily be hidden with the use of a sharpie or the like. Whilst we're on the right hand side, it's worth noting these come with a safety, a feature the originals didn't have initially and is quite a firm safety with a definite click 
and wouldn't easily be usable by any children should anyone be careless enough to leave this lying around. Okay, time to hit the chronograph then. Let's try a couple of things, shall we? Some standard weight lead and then try the lighter alloy type across all three models, shall we? And whilst we're on the British theme, I think we should use the BSA pellets for this one. The gold stars and the green stars. The 6 inch using the 8.64 grain gold stars saw 319 feet per second which equates to 1.95 foot pounds or 2.65 joules. Then with the lighter green stars at 6.64 grains it saw 365 feet per second which is 1.96 foot pounds or 2.66 joules. Then let's see what happens when we go shorter in the barrel length. Next up then, the 4 inch police version in aged finish. Using the 8.64 grain it saw 338 feet per second which is 2.19 foot pounds or 2.97 joules. With the lighter BSA green stars at 6.64 grains, it saw 378 feet per second, which is 2.11 foot pounds or 2.86 joules. And finally, the 2.5 inch pocket version with the 8.64 grains, it saw 321 feet per second, which is 1.98 foot pounds or 2.68 joules. And with the alloy type, 6.64 grains, Saw 370 feet per second, which is 2.02 foot pounds or 2.74 joules. It does state below 3 joules on that sticker on each of these revolvers, and I must say, even with the difference in length of barrels, which would normally give you a higher power output, they've really worked these to ensure each one is consistent on the power output. Hats off to them, really. Webley state these should be around 2.1 foot pounds in both 177 and 0.22 versions and even BB versions. There is however a 6mm version available too. Now it's time for the fun part, target work. Let's put the different lengths to test and see if that barrel length has much of an effect on the accuracy then shall we? Well, bit of an autumnal day today, it's a bit cold, but at least it stopped raining, which is a start. It's still a bit of a breeze going off, and I must admit, it's really nice to see the golden of the leaves, um, even though they're coming down off the trees, uh, some beautiful colours. Anyway, we digress. Today, we've got an absolute selection of the Webley Mark 6s to test down the range, see just how we get on with them. Looking forward to this. One of my favourites, as I've said, the six, four, two and a half. And I'm interested to see just what difference there is as far as accuracy is concerned. We've looked at the power figures. Now let's look at the accuracy. Set out at just the usual 10 metres. So let's see how we get on, shall we? First one up is the six inch, which needs the shells loading and of course it can be done either by taking them out of the gun or simply popping them in from the back. You lose a little bit of that experience of the gun by just popping pellets in the back whilst they're still sat in the cylinder uh, but just for testing purposes it's a little bit quicker, a little bit easier. So let's see how we go. Safety is off. Scaring the pigeons anyway. <laughs> All empty. Put safety on while we're at it. So that's the six inch. We'll go and change the targets and then we'll come back and try it on the four inch. Okay, new target. What we need to do first of all is drop some CO2s into it. So click the handle open, wind it back on the cord loop, slot it in. It's usually best, to be fair, to just drop a bit of silicon oil on the end before you do this. 
just for the longevity of your seals. Just tweak it, there's no point in swinging on it, you don't need to. Just check it, make sure it's actually loaded. Yep, there we go. So, the shells, I've had pellets preloaded in the back, so I'm going to drop them in. This to me adds more to the overall experience and I like this part, but there we go. Safety's off. Let's see how it compares, shall we? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that's it. Shells out. Safety back on. Another new target in. Let's try it with the two and a half. It is strange how each one does feel that little bit different. Yeah, in the hand. It's a very top end weighty gun because of the more polymer based grip. Yeah, each one has its own in individual, it's the word I'm looking for, feel to it. I really quite like the little two and a half inch, it's really good fun. So, we've got some chalk targets. Let's have a go at some of those, shall we? Absolutely great fun and a bit of a shock. The six inch was the most accurate, which should be expected. But then the two and a half inch outshot the four inch. Now that could be down to the feel of the gun, because for some reason I just found the two and a half inch really comfortable and thoroughly enjoyed the experience. I've often stated how manufacturers give us so many options. Some would say it's wrong because they're just trying to get us to spend more. Me? Well, I think it's fantastic that a collector can get full and accurately authentic collections of his or her favourite guns from history. I would love a full set of these framed and hung on my office wall. Now there's an idea. <laughs> Time to drop some hints, methinks, to Mrs. AAR. Price-wise then, well, because these are top draw in terms of quality and build, expect to pay around 189 to 200 mark, depending on barrel length and finish for the 177 pellet versions. These really are up there with the best of the replica guns in terms of accuracy, authenticity, quality and feel. The design, and I suppose more specifically the 19th century design, may not appeal to everyone in the 21st century, but for those of us who love this sort of thing, these are a must-have and so much fun. I must say I really have enjoyed my time with these and hopefully you have too. If you have, please give us the old thumbs up. Feel free to share and comment and of course don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Click the alarm notification bell whilst you're there to be notified when new programmes come out. AAR merchandise is available from Mrs AAR as usual and a big thank you at this point to Webley for making my day and taking the effort, time and trouble to produce these guns 
And of course, a big thank you to Carl and his team at Vector Air for again being one of the first to get hold of these for me to review. That's it from me this week. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Back to the renovation work for me until next week. Thank you guys for watching and hopefully I'll see you next week. Bye for now.